Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our Made with Love mini series. My name is Leah. I am your moderator. And Craftsy, Creative Cake Design, National Sewing Circle, and our Creative Crochet Corner have all teamed up to provide a week full of live demonstrations and a bundle of five free patterns and recipes. They are perfect for gifting your loved ones on Valentine's Day. So make sure to download your free patterns by clicking the link in the description. Now, once you get to the patterns page, you also want to make sure to click the picture of the project it is that you would like to download. Now, if you've missed any of the live streams from our entire week of mini series, all of the videos are available for replay at any time. Now for today, if you have any questions during today's event, please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I'll keep an eye on those questions during the event. If they're specific to the project, I'll slide them in as they come. Uh, if you have more general questions for today's instructor, however, please don't hesitate to drop those in as well. We love to get to as many questions as we can in the time that we have. So we will move through them all through the hour that we have today. Now it's time for me to bring on today's instructor. We are wrapping up on a Friday with Mr. Domestic, a sewing expert, crafter, designer, and a craftsy instructor. Hello, Mr. Domestic. Thank you so much for being here. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been up to, and then also, what are we making today? Hi, everybody. How are you? I've missed y'all. I hope everyone's been having a great time doing all the fun things. Um, I'm doing something craftastic that involves a sewing machine today. Um, wearing my nice little quilt hoodie that someone made for me with the quilt that I have made, looking all stylish. That's comfortable. And yes, I am wearing pants too. <laughs> this is a professional situation. But what I'm making, I don't have a demo for because that was sold in a fundraiser that I did. I did. For those that don't know, I periodically do fundraisers where I collect like handmade items from the community and then people will bid on those items. And then that money of the winning bid will go to one of the charities or organizations. And so that one is gone, but today we're going to make a super duper exciting one because it involves a weave. Ooh. Ooh. People are always asking me what I do with my weaves because it's hard to visualize beyond just a square or turning it into a pillow or anything that I've shown y'all. So I'm gonna show you another application. It was ac actually by accident, I was sitting here going through my fabric stash, trying to decide what I wanted to do. Cause you know, I just go with the wind when it comes to sewing and crafting. And I definitely wanted to use this print because I'm making a heart. And this is a, the canvas from my Love is Love Pride collection that came out last year, but it's still out. So if you want to get this, you can. So I'm using a canvas. And then, dun, dun, dun. I just did this weave just for no reason. And then this is the weave I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut this one up. So this is essentially going to be the second fabric. And I'm going to show you how to turn all of this goodness into a duo of heart pillows that's sure to satisfy. In the pattern that you all received, it's the ooh la la denim heart pillows pattern. That is a specific size that is smaller than what I'm going to go through. There's gonna be slight differences in application. And I'm doing that because I recognize that the pattern is small. And I wanna show you that you can make this any size that you want to. So I went up to a 12 inch square and instead of using the template, I did what we used to do in like elementary school that my kid does, cause I have an eight year old. I took a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. I cut a heart and then I did it till it was cute. And I was like, ew, I did this. That's a cute heart. Hey, if you like my heart, put some hearts in the comments or whatever. I think, I mean, honestly, I feel like this is expert level. And just, just for how good I did this heart, I feel that this is enough credibility to show why I'm here. So really, I mean, <laughs> um, so that, that's what it's going to be. I should be able to get through the entire process. I'm not gonna be binding this pillow. I'm doing an envelope back. So it's also a different application there. But this is going to be super duper fun because it's nothing that I've ever done before with the weave. And I'm like 95% certain it's going to be really, really cute. And if the other 5% happens, oh, well. <laughs> so what we need for this 
You need either your template if you're following along with the pattern, or you can do this. This might be a fun way. Oh, I should have had Helena do this. I just had this idea because I'm always trying to come up with ways to like involve my kid. She can't necessarily sit behind a sewing machine from start to finish on her own and make something, but we kind of like tag team. So this could have been one of the things that I had her do. I could have been like, hey, can you make me a really big, cool heart? And then this would have been the heart and the pillow. Oh, that's a way to personalize it. Look, I've got ideas inspired by all of you out there. So you need that template. This one is bigger. You need one fabric to da. And then you need, where's the other one? For the duo, the way that I'm doing this with this application is you need two squares of one fabric. I'm going to use this as the background in both and how I'm going to attach the weave. It's gonna be super duper cool in my head. So hopefully in real life, it's super duper cool. So I have two of these and one fabric. Then I have a weave. Oh, this is really nice. Like this. This is gonna be cut up. Then for each pillow, I am for my envelope back. This is 12. For anyone that wants to do the same size as me, 12 by nine that I am going to fold over once, fold over again, boom, boom, shake the room like that to create one of the seams in the envelope back. And I'll show you all that process pending the time. But if time goes, I look, I already did it. I got to step out. Look what I did, I did that. So are we ready to cut some stuff out? We have got some hearts in the comments. People are hoping you're having a great day. It's a perfect heart. I think we're ready to go. Okay, okay, okay. So I have 12 of these. I mean, two of these 12 by 12. I did a little bit bigger than 12, like 12 and like a quarter-ish, you know, just in case. It's always better to have too much fabric than too little because you can't go backwards. I've learned the hard way a couple times. So I'm going to take my weave. Ooh, but now I have to determine where the heart's going to be. I feel like, <sighs> let's decide together. So let's see how this looks. That looks really cute together. Like if that was just the background, let's alternate. But what if it was like this? And then this is the background. <sighs> Ooh. Really, there's no, no wrong way. Do people want to vote on it? Let's do that in real time. This right here is A. This is B. C. And D. Tell me which one I should um, make this way, the flower. <laughs> we'll see what comes in. <laughs> That made absolutely no sense. And if someone did this on a live stream, I might be like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> but um, basically it's going to show it's, there's no right or wrong reason to do it. So I was going to take this. Did someone, was, are people voting? Uh, people are not voting. Kathleen wanted to know, are these 10 inch squares or does it not matter? This, I am using 12 inch squares for mine. Mm -hmm. The pattern says 10 inch squares, but that's a tiny pillow. Not everyone wants a tiny pillow. So this is why I'm showing you a larger one. Cause let's say that you wanted a 20 inch by 20 inch. You just wanted a big old hug and pillow like to make, then you can do 20 inch by 20 inch. Just make sure that the heart is cut from a 20 inch by 20 inch square of something. But then you fold it down the center and make your own heart. But yeah, you can make this any size you want to. Cause 10 by 10 is kind of small. Um, and wow. then I have to tell you, we have votes that have come in. It is not helpful. We are tied at C and D. <laughs> okay, then so. it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now, ta-da, I'm going to flip this over just because it's going to make me a little bit more comfortable cutting it. But this is where I'm going to cut it. This is what I chose, I think, or we chose, y'all chose, or was it this one? Oh, this is it, right? Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna put my heart right here in the corner. 
And since I'm gonna show y'all the right way to do stuff, I got my pen right here. Hi everybody, like that. I'm gonna use my friction pen or my heat erasable pen to trace the heart. If you have fabric fabric, like that you could fold in a diagonal, like I can't fold my weave like that to where it would be super crispy, then fold your fabric in a diagonal just like this. And all you have to do is cut along this because then both sides will be perfect. But I'm gonna show you my expertness in cutting to show you that I can do symmetry. And if not, it's okay, it'll still be cute. <laughs> Okay, like so. So now I've traced it out. I'm gonna cut it. You know, it'd be really good if I had one of those turny things, but I don't. So, if there are questions during this, we can I can answer some. Uh, let me look through. Most uh, enthusiastic voting has happened. I'll put out a little ask here. Um, even if you don't have a question, why don't you let us know if you're planning on making this project, where's it going to go? Are you going to gift it or is it going to be decor in your own house somewhere fun? Uh, I know we like to know where these projects end up as you're making them. So definitely, even if you don't have a question, share something like that. Yeah. What are y'all doing for Valentine's? Like that's a holiday that's coming up. It I actually is. wrote an article that was published on datingadvice.com about like my five tips to having a Valentine's Day. It was focused on the queer community, but like just in general, and I went a direction they didn't expect. I was on like, the first person you need to love on is love on yourself. Like we're not trained as a culture to love on ourselves. We're trained to love other people. That's like love on yourself. So gift yourself a pillow, give yourself a big heart pillow, you know? Cause like we need to love ourselves and that's totally okay. So I'll give you my other tips throughout. You have to remain for the entire live stream, but that's number one. Love on yourself, everybody. Did you like my singing? I mean, we did tune in for crafting, but I'll take singing as well. Yeah. It's multitasking. Oh, Linda's going to be gifting this to her granddaughter. Oh, I love it. Little that's family cute. projects. That's awesome. Oh. Ibrahim, definitely in my living room. I have to say, when I saw the photo of this project, uh, that's what I thought. I was like, yes, get, get some love in the living room. Christine is keeping the pillow for herself. So you are not alone in the loving yourself on Valentine's Day. Love yourself Day. first. <laughs> love yourself first. Okay, let me put this back over. Now, I noticed you're using a rotary cutter, Matthew. Yeah. Uh, any reason that you can't use just a regular pair of your fabric scissors or oh, yeah, this was here and my scissors are over there, but really you could use any, <laughs> okay, I'm going to get my scissors for this one little section, but yeah, especially with curves, some people might not be as comfortable, mm -hmm. um, cutting with a rotary cutter and I don't want anyone to like cut themselves and like be mad at me. So you know what I'm saying? If you want to <laughs> use scissors, do that because you don't want to cut yourself. <laughs> and this one came a little undone, but I still got it. Oh yeah, this is cute. Now, oh, look, I got a little woven heart. Oh, right? That's cute. Good job. And then this is the other one. So now with this, we're gonna be able to make two because we don't want to waste this. If you have good fabric, especially this weave, this is gonna become the second one. So I will do the one where the weed is going to be the heart first. And then after that, I'll show you the other one. So this is where you need one of these pieces of fabric and the pattern, it's a 10 by 10 piece. This is a 12 by 12 or 12 ish by 12 ish. And then I like to put my heart, this is my left side on the left side where the point is on the left side, because that's just what I like if you're using a directional fabric. If you're not using one, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, this is gonna be so pretty. I did a good job, okay. Also, you need to affirm yourself throughout your crafting and sewing. It makes the experience a lot better. And everyone say, hi, Tony. If hi, you Tony. Met Tony, this is Tony, my non-binary 
Janome M7 Continental Machine. They and I have been through a lot and I really love them. They're the best sewing machine ever. Talking nicely to your sewing machine also helps. Expert advice. That I'm gonna do this without clips because I live a little reckless when it comes to sewing. But this would be a good place to clip. The first thing that I'm going to do is baste both of the straight lines. I'm gonna baste that. And basting, for those of you who are unfamiliar, you can baste it with glue. You can baste it with stitches. I'm gonna stitch baste it. And in basting stitches, make them a little bit longer. So I'm gonna to go to five millimeters in length. And why is that is it's just to keep things in intact in, in place whenever you maneuver and manipulate it. So if you need to remove it, it's real easy because the stitches are long and it's no big deal. So I'm gonna start right here in this corner and I'm gonna make sure it goes within the seam line. So my seam allowance here is a half inch. So I want the basting stitch to be in there. So I'm gonna roughly make it a quarter. Everyone is amazing. Love yourself, love yourself. So my second tip, I think it was the second one, was, and this was for my queer friends, but really th this advice can apply to everyone, was to let your friends know that you love them. That was my second tip, because especially in the queer community, Valentine's is a time where a lot of us feel lonely. And this isn't just a queer thing. We all feel lonely, we all feel alone. We all feel like everyone else is having a great time and getting the love and the roses and the candy and all that. And that's a time where suicidality is honestly something that, that the queer community has to, to tackle. So it's like, if you have friends, which we all do, just call them and say, I love you. That's it, let everyone know that you see them and you love them. Like, that's important. That would mean a lot to me. Y'all don't all have to call me. But you can like put a comment on something. I just think that's important. We've all been like secluded for the most part in our little shells. Reach out to your network. Let them know you're thinking about them and that you love them, even though your bubbles might have shrank. So that's my second tip. I love that we're getting little Valentine's Day tips and crafting tips today. You know, this and you know what? Service experience. There are quite a few people in the comments that are making this project for themselves just to have something nice to look at and hang on to. So yes, lots of people taking your tips. Now, when you get a chance, Matthew, there are also a, quite a few people in the comments that are more interested in learning about the weave. Yeah. So if you wanted to talk about what you use to make it and how you put it together, maybe your inspiration. I think people really are loving that weave today. Yeah. So Fabric weaving is one of the things that I'm best known for um, because it's super fun and I'm really good at it. But I, I got obsessed with it because fabric weaving was the foundation of how I learned how to quilt because I was able to play with different fabrics on a small scale before I like tackled and spent hundreds of dollars on fabric and made something big. But this one was from a fabric that I designed over on Spoonflower. I did some something with them for like the Thanksgiving time and I wanted to do a woven project. So I designed 14 different striped panels. So you can buy one yard of fabric and there are so many stripes it's either 32 or 16. Then this was my 32 color one. So from one yard of fabric, it came with all of these stripes to weave it. So yeah, I love, I just weave all of the time. I would check out if you want to learn, there's some classes here you can learn about fabric weaving. I've got some on my So You Sewing School. I've got some patterns, but weaving is one of those things that, that forces me into presence, like just to be here mm -hmm. because I cannot, I kind of know what stuff's going to look like, kind of, but not really. So it's like, I grab this, I don't know what it's going to look like in the end. So as I'm doing it, I'm just amazed by how beautiful it's turning out. And it's like magic's appearing before my eyes. And I've been fabric weaving for like five or six years. I've probably done hundreds, if not a thousand weaves. And I still feel that way. So yeah, stick with me. Find me um, everywhere on the interweb. Because fabric weaving is one of those things I love. And I love to talk about. And I might, may or may not have a book coming out in July about fabric weaving. 
So, to, to exclusive information that I'm not sure I'm allowed to share, but ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> so I have just basted it here. So it's not going anywhere. And from here, what I decided for this, instead of doing the zigzag stitch that combines the two, for that, I shrink a stitch down to like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters in length. And then I widen it to five millimeters or six millimeters. And then I just follow it along the center and then it just captures it and gets it all in there. If you're using a high fray fabric like a uh, denim or a uh, canvas and you definitely wanna make it a wider stitch just because it might fray and or you could base it down with glue and it won't go anywhere. But that's just something to consider depending on the fabric. But I don't want to do that because I want this to become a pillow that wears along the edges. I kind of want the, the weave to be the highlight. And my, my intent is to like edge stitch this like around an eighth inch inside. And I'm just going to stitch it. Um, and then over time, like it'll get all worn and weathered and stuff and be really, really cute. So over time, it'll get even more interesting. And that's all in my head. We're manifesting and doing this as we go. That's what I feel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shorten the stitch back down to three millimeters. That's what I like to quilt. My top stitching and my quilting, I like at three millimeters. That makes me feel happy. So if you have a different stitch, we don't need to have an argument. You can do 2.9 if that's your preference. I support you. I empower you. 2.8 even. But now I'm just going to go around there. So... Are we ready? Let's do it. Oh yeah. I have to, does anyone else do this? <laughs> I was holding my breath and it's something I always do. Whenever it's like a part of any project where I really, really have to focus, I hold my breath. Am I alone there? Do other people do that? I'm gonna guess you're not alone. <laughs> okay, cause I'm totally doing it. I just, I was like, oh. That I focus, but I, I want to breathe because living is good. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to focus and then I'm going to breathe. So if there's anything we can chat about, we can chat. Well, let's go through some of the other ideas that people have for their own version of this. So I know that somebody here in the comments mentioned that they were going to use their dog. I'm trying to find who that is. Ah, Cindy. Cindy is going to print a picture of my dog on fabric and make that the heart. And then Cindy's going to keep it. Nilda just wants to have this project around just to have it around for some fun decor. Uh -huh. And then going back to overall Valentine's Day plans, uh, aside from this pillow, Denise has made over 100 decorated sugar cookies for Valentine's Day. Mm. And I know we were sharing our love of sweet treats before we went live. So <laughs> oh, how, sounds... where do, you, do you live near me? <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat sugar cookies. <laughs> Oh, oh, and then a question just popped in here from Keisha. And uh, would you add fusible interfacing to this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like this would actually be a great way. Another way to do this kind of applique is you could, um, you could add fusible interfacing to this if you wanted to stabilize it, if that was the question. Or on the fabric that you're going to have be the heart or the one forward, that one you can put like a double-sided fusible, like a heat and bond that is fusible on both sides and you don't even have to sew like this could be a no sew situation for the front you oh. could put that fusible on this slap it on the front iron it per the instructions of the double-sided fusible and it's good and if you use the ultra hold it's not going anywhere i tried to take something off that had ultra hold before it was not a pretty situation it's just not something that occurs but absolutely yeah all right. And we have uh, Denise loves your hoodie. Thank you, Denise. You have very good taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Now, this is good. Like, this is my pillow front. 
that's it. And when I put the the envelope back on it, then it's going to be constructed. But I'm going to walk you through the envelope back because we have time and stuff, and I'm not ready to leave y'all. Um, and it's important. I've got some tips to share. So speaking of tips, my third tip about Valentine's Day. <laughs> Um, once again, it was geared towards the queer community, but it applies to everyone, was to connect with your community, whether it's a virtual community or whether it's um, an in-person community. Me, my preference is not to people in person, so I would prefer this, the virtual situation, but it's just whatever your community is. If it's the LGBTQ plus community to feel seen and comfortable and loved in a different way, then check out to see if there's a Q center. Most larger cities have it. If not, come find me anywhere. Like my, my community is inclusive, very queer positive. So I'm an online experience where it, you can be yourself and feel seen and feel comfortable there. But just anyone in general, whoever you are, get in touch with our community. We lose touch with that in a big way. I feel like not so much with crafting, but um, I feel like I used to be connected to a bigger community. And now it's just, I focus just on the Mr. Domestic community, but there's a community to, to connect with. This is an example of it. So if it's like finding a live stream or I'm scrolling some people on the internet that are queer positive, then, then do that. But that's my tip number three. Okay. <laughs> are y'all giggling with me? I don't even know what y'all are doing. I'm giggling in myself. I hope y'all are giggling too. I think we're starting a holding breath community also. So you hold your <laughs> breath. So does Maureen. So does Denise. So does Deborah. So does Heidi. Thank you. I feel seen. So we I'm have not, a new community. Don't leave me out there on a limb. <laughs> so this is a nine by 12. For yours, if you're going to maneuver the, the size, like let's say you want to do a 16 by 16. Then what I do to, to know what I need is just cut that in half so it's eight inches. And then I want at least two inches going either way. I generally will go three inches. So that's eight plus three. So I would need an 11 by 16 and 11 by 16. I know that was fast math. I know it. And I'm happy to put that in the comments after this um, if anyone wants more information on calculating that for a bigger or smaller project. But this part will be the same whether it's on the top or the bottom. So let's say this is the bottom one because the pretty seam will be on the top. But I'm going to press it once it heats up. <laughs> I'm gonna press it like this one I guesstimate, like a quarter inch, quarter inch, a half inch, just to get that, that done. I don't feel this is gonna work. Da -da -da. What is the weather like everywhere that y'all are? I'm very curious about that. Well, I have on mine because I don't want people to get mad. <laughs> but I would love to know. I, mean, I can you know my weather. It's like 40 degrees and sunny outside. It's nice. Maybe it's 50 degrees. I can only speak for Minnesota, uh, but it has gotten colder as the day has gone on. Ooh, look at that crisp line. So that's crispy, super crispy. And now I'm gonna fold it over at about a half inch. And now we have a question there. that, a question that's come in just about fabric. Yeah. Uh, so Ibrahim wants to know, can you use any fabric to sew these pillows or yeah. is there a better fabric that you would recommend to select? Any fabric, any fabric. Um, depending on the fabric would determine how I applied it. So if I was just doing fabric on fabric, then that's where I would use that double-sided fusible and I probably wouldn't sew it because it's not needed. If I was using a frayed fabric like this one, these are fraying fabrics, so I just want to accentuate that. So that's why I'm applying it this way. But any, any way, you can do it any way that you want to. You could do this with paper and be like, look, it's a Valentine's card. I mean, really, yeah, use anything that you want. Another thing to make it more substantive, since you might not be quilting it, is to then put like just a one-sided fusible interfacing on it so it will have more stability to it. But even that, it's not necessary. So now I have this, ta-da. And anytime I know I'm gonna have a seam like this, I have the same thread in the bobbin in the top. I generally sew with that. But, um, and for those that wanna know, it's Wonderfill Deco Bob Light Gray. That's pretty much what I sew with. 
If I need to use um, a thicker one, then I'll use a Wonderfill Ultima. It's a cottonized polyester, but I just like poly, the look of it. And why I like this one specifically is with top stitches or quilting, it, it basically melts into any color. Like mm. it just, it looks like I'm using whatever that thread color is, it's wild. So I am stitching this on the back. So I'm using this little edge right here as a guideline, as opposed to stitching in the front, because this way it'll be even, but sometimes because we're humans and there's that human error thing, I have, if I stitch it from the front, sometimes missed that little ledge. So this keeps me from missing it. So I at least know that it's secure all the way across. Oh, we've got quite a few uh, different weather situations popping into the chat. So a lot of close to 70 degrees, people making me want to move here, but we've got uh, a chilly 40 in Chicago. 65 in DC with Carrie, 73 in Las Vegas with Debbie. Valerie's got 69 degrees in Raleigh. Ooh, lots of people getting pretty close to 70 here. Wow. What's that about? I don't know. That's confusing. Like <laughs> winter's over, it seems. Not in everywhere. I know some places are getting snow. And that's <laughs> Um, I do have a question here as well that popped in. Now you talked about using glue, perhaps. What kind of glue would you use for fabrics? I was going to use a glue to like permanently baste it. Then I use like a fabric fusion or a fabric fuse. They're permanent glues. They're awesome. Sometimes I'll use like a double-sided fabric tape, like glue tape, that stuff. Once you have that down, it's not going anywhere. So just make sure you're sure. And then if I'm not wanting it to be permanent, then I'll use like a, um, a 505. That's my favorite like adhesive glue basing thing for like quilting and stuff. Okay. I am basing the other one just so that you can get an idea of what that one's gonna look like as the second one. Cause this is a no waste situation. And so this is the second one will be like this and then I'll top stitch this along so it will be there and this one will be a heart too and then let me show you what they look like together oh this is really cute I did a good job look look at that that's not a joke y'all that's legit that's legit I did a good job <laughs> thank you thank you for the affirmation <laughs> they're in there <laughs> Okay, so now this. To do an envelope back, I have both the front and the back. As you can see, one has this on the top and one has it on the bottom. And so when I'm doing envelope back, I want the top to have the overhang, not the bottom. So the first one that I put on is the top. So I'm gonna line up the top one, which has it, you can read it, look. And I'm going to line that up with the raw edge of the top here. And then just so it doesn't move, I'm going to baste the top. That means I'm moving it to five millimeters in length. You can also use like pins or clips. My clips are in a box in my storage unit. So here we are. That would make it very difficult to just grab them and use them. <laughs> <laughs> but also so you can see so the top is basted now I'm going to line up the bottom and base this to the bottom and since I'm just basing it now I'm doing it within that seam allowance so it's about a quarter inch And now I'm going to go up the sides. One more side. And 
why I'm basing before I, I permanently sew it is with these, I found for whatever reason, if I do a permanent stitch for some reason, one of these folds and it flips in a weird place. So I'm trying to get that out of the way and then I'm gonna permanently sew it. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back around at one, one half inch seam allowance with a regular stitch. So that means I'm going down to 2.4. That's how I like to stitch and piece when I'm doing quilting. Nilda just dropped into the chat, really likes it when you mention this stitch length. So thank you for oh, giving awesome. us some thank details. you. Okay, cool. I did a good thing. Okay, let's go. So I'm doing a half inch now. Yeah, let's do that. I don't remember what the other two tips were. Let me look on my thing. Because <laughs> uh, it's important. I don't want you to be left out. There we go. So another one. Oh, I was doing it in order too. Oh, ding, ding, ding. So this is an important one. And this is for the queer community. Hi, hello. I love everyone. one. If you're not queer, it's totally fine. You don't have to be to be cool, right? If you're not, you're cool too. But um, my fourth tip was to spend actual dollars in LGBTQ and queer owned businesses that um, especially during holidays with people trying to appeal to the queer community, um, companies will make the mistake of like putting out items and selling items without the money actually going to the queer community. So like they're exploiting us. So it's just a reminder to love your community too with actual dollars if you have them. Um, because they, they, while there might be more visibility out there, um, there's not necessarily more like money helping these people. So that was my number four. You're welcome. <laughs> We need these tips. I mean, it's important because, I mean, it's, it's reminders. Mm -hmm. it's remi Anyone who did not silo themselves down into a small little group for at least a bit during this time. Wow. That's amazing. I'm envious. But most of us did. Yeah. And we forgot about all those other people. And so now it's time to re re rekindle those that aren't toxic. <laughs> I agree. I really feel this. Now we got a technical question coming in here. Are you using polyester thread? I am using polyester thread, yeah. yeah. That's my preference in general. Um, I would probably use cotton if I was selling like apparel that was like cotton fabric too. I just like polyester because I know it's gonna, not going to break. Mm -hmm. And it really started with my hand sewing. Because with hand sewing, I don't know if it was like my working out made me too muscly and I would just tear my thread all the time because it was cotton. Polly doesn't do that. And so that's what got me started on it. And most of my stuff is like really durable stuff that's going to have high utility. So I like to know that that's not going to rip. Mm -hmm. One more. Are y'all ready to see this pillow? I think they are. And then we have a couple of questions that we'll hold till the end as well that are a little more general too. Okay. One other thing on pillows that I do is I will... You don't want to go inside, but I'll just trim the corner a little bit in the seam allowance because then it allows the corner to poke out like cleaner as opposed to it making like a little curved. If y'all have ever done a pillow, you know what I'm talking about, how it'll make it curve. It's just a little tip to make it a little extra crispy in the corners if you like crispy corners. If you don't like crispy corners, it's okay though. And then I'm so excited. If you're excited to see it, let me know in the comments. I'm going to do it here so y'all can't see it until it's done. Ooh. No. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. 
And for people who like to bind, you could also bind these in the in the pattern. They're bound. It adds a nice little moment of cuteness. I didn't do binding on this because I wanted everything to be about the weave and I didn't want anything to distract from that. So I wanted a clean edge all the way around um, that didn't distract. So you have thoughts. There's those thoughts. We make those thoughts. And then, okay. Now I'm just going to, y'all, you don't know how cute this is because I haven't shown you yet. But hold on. Let me just press it. Don't be cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about this film. Okay. <laughs> okay. Once I stuff it, look, folks. You're not gonna lie and tell me that's not cute. This is cute. Imagine with the other one, like, y'all. Oh, I did them this way, not intentionally, to where they're like, they're, oh, look at that. So that is how you make the ooh la la pillow. You can use the same fabrics, you can use different fabrics, you can switch it up. Um, you can, uh, change textiles, put some leather in there, like whatever you wanted to do. It's really an easy, easy maximum impact kind of project, especially for beginner sewers who want to come up with some kind of project that isn't intimidating. Hopefully this was that for y'all. Um, Cause wow, it would become all about the fabric. And anytime you pick my fabric, it's good fabric. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks y'all for, um, for coming. The final tip in my tips of five tips. This is, and this was not in a crafting um, magazine. It was in a dating magazine. My fifth tip was to craft something. Yes, I said craft something because crafting's cool and it makes us happy and it gets us in touch with ourselves. And for me, a lot of it is about that presence thing that I was talking about. It's like, I get to come in my room no matter what mood I'm in. My fabric's not gonna judge me. My yarn is not gonna judge me. I close my door, I get some stuff. And at the end of the day, even if it's not cute, I did something with myself. So it's all about like, like connecting with yourself again. We all, need to, we all need to do that. We all need to learn to love one another and, and ourselves. So um, hopefully you've been inspired by this and you had fun. Thanks uh, again for having me come teach you all some stuff. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll make sure to, to check them and respond and have an awesome Valentine's day and every day. You don't um, need a special day to love yourself either. You can love yourself every day. So everyone love themselves now. One final thing and then it's over, Leah. One final thing. Everyone, we're going to do this. We're going to do a group hug, okay? So I want everyone, so stick your hands up like this, okay? Yes, Leah, do it. I can see you. And then wrap your hands like this, okay? And then close your eyes, count to three. And when I get to three, we're all going to squeeze, okay? Close your eyes. One. Two, three. Yeah, that was a group hug, a virtual group hug. So love you, everyone. Keep it positive. All right. I have a couple of things to go over before we say our final farewell. So like uh, Matthew had said, drop anything into the chat box if you have anything uh, left over to ask and he'll take a look at those. Uh, but first of all, I have to say thank you for joining us all week long. We had a full fun Made with Love mini series and it, we've had a blast, I have to say. So remember that you can still download any of the free patterns, any of the recipes from this mini series by clicking the link in the description and all of the live demos are are available for replay at any time. We really finished off with a fantastic project today. Thank you again for joining us all week on behalf of Matthew, Mr. Domestic, of course, and our entire team of instructors this entire week. 